Boys and girls, hope to find all of you are doing well. I'm looking forward to the opportunity that I'm able to see each and every one of you again. Today I'd like to read you the story, The Legend of Mackinac Island. Long, long ago, Earth was a quiet place covered entirely of water. There was no mountains or valleys. There were no forests or meadows. There was nothing but one brilliant blue sea with a dark, murky bottom far, far below. But life upon the giant world of water was dazzling and bright. It was filled with the rustling of waves and the splashing of ducks and the jumping of quick silvery fish. There were many animals there and their days were filled with laughter and friendship. In the morning loons carried soft downy chicks on their backs, keeping them warm and dry. In the afternoon, otters played silly games upon the waves, rolling their long bodies between the curve of the waves. And while the other animals played, Beavers bustled back and forth, splashing their flat and shiny tails upon the water. All around them, wee little muskrats tried to keep pace with their small, flat paws paddling eagerly against the water. And the midst of these fast and playful animals was one special creature who was quiet and slow. His name was Mackinac, and he was the oldest, wisest, and largest painted turtle to live in the great blue water. Every day, Mackinac floated upon the water in a calm and steady way, and as he floated, he would lift his large, wrinkled neck into the air and blink his deep, round eyes. Mackinac carried the wisdom of centuries in his words and always greeted his friends with a slow, upward smile. The animals were always delighted when Mackinac floated by because if they were cold or tired, he would let them climb upon his back to rest in the warm afternoon sun. And if they were sad, he would sing sweet, happy songs to cheer them up. And sometimes when the air was still and the moment was just right, all the animals would gather around Mackinac and listen carefully as he told them wonderful stories about their giant world of water. One day Mackinac <coughs> swam steadily toward the other animals. His old weather face appeared quite serious, and in a low, broad voice, he told the animals how the great spirit of the sky said that now was the time to build a beautiful place of land for all the animals to rest upon. <clears throat> Mackinac then told the animals that one of them must dive through the depths of the water and bring up one handful of rich, wet soil and place it upon his back. Then, said Mackinac, would be the beginning of a brand new world. The animals chattered with excitement and the wise old turtle raised his head and spoke clearly to all of them. I shall give to you a special home upon my weathered back where rivers run beneath the sun in red and gold and black, to rest upon the water blue, a land so new, a land so new. Naturally, Loon wanted to be the first to try, because she was the most loyal of all the creatures and always willing to prove her devotion. She pulled her broad wings tightly to her back, stretch her long, graceful neck, and point herself toward the bottom of the world. 
Moments later, she was up again, without a grain of soil in her beak. Disappointed, she hopped aboard Mackinac's back to dry her feathers in the sun. Beaver, the most resourceful and hardest working of all animals, decided that he should be the next to try. He stiffened his back and twitched his nose, and with a loud slap of his tail, dove deep toward the bottom of the world. Small waves rolled over the spot where Beaver disappeared. A little while later, he rose to the surface, holding nothing in his paws. He climbed back an ox back and closed his eyes in sadness. Then I decided it was her turn to try. With a twist and a turn and a flip of the tail, she plunged into the depths far below. Otter bobbed up to the surface several times, each time diving deeper and deeper. Eventually she reappeared, and with no soil in her forefeet, she slipped onto the great turtle's back and let out a long, Soft sigh. The animals rested quietly on Mackinac's back. Very sad. While they were sitting there, Muskrat came by, and the wary animals told him about their struggle to grab a handful of soil from the bottom of the world. Muskrat was eager to help his friends, so he told Matt and the other animals that he would dive in the dark and murky bottom far below. Loon, Beaver, and Otter laughed loudly because Matt was the smallest and most humble of creatures. His paws were weak and his back was weak. Surely he would fail. But Mackinac did not laugh because he was kind and wise. Because he was a good friend to all animals, he smiled at Muskrat and nodded his head in a slow, gentle way, approving Muskrat's offer. But the animals were doubtful as they watched Muskrat take a long, deep breath, filling his until they could hold no more. Then, much to their dismay, Muskrat closed his eyes and dove into the water. Splish, splash, splash. Little round bubbles popped up all around him as he made his way to the bottom far below. Loon, beaver, and otter peered into the water, certain that muskrat would never reach the bottom. They knew the journey was very long. Lee, he would return quickly with no in his grasp. They waited and they watched, but no muskrat. The animal more. Time passed and they began to They felt sad that they had laughed so cruelly at their little friend. Loon let out a long, little cry. No regret. Beaver folded his busy hands toward his blood dark face. No muskrat. Otter stiffened her body, sat straight and still, and was unusually serious. Still, no muskrat. As they waited, began to fall, and the water shimmered in the fading sunlight. Animals searched every way to swell. They listened to each splash, and hoping to see the muskrat. But he was here. The sky began to fill with a whisper of clouds, and all of the animals were. A giant tear rolled. 
just at the corner of Mackinac I, Loon, Beaver, and Beaver saw the tiger slip down the giant turtle and began to weep softly the moon for the loss of their friend, hope of new land. And whoosh! A pot muskrat. He flew to the top of the water. His forehead, and his body was trembling with all of it. His eyes were open wide and his cheeks were nearly blue. But wedged in the grasp of his small furry paws was dark soil that was needed to make the beautiful new land. Hooray! Hooray! Mackadoc nodded a large round head and said, I give you a special place. Sunshine crowns the land where flowers bloom jewels everywhere you stand. To float on the water blue, home for you, a home for you. All the animals in awe as much quickly tossed the handful of Great turtles back. Magic the soil grew and grew and grew. Rocks and flowers appeared. Light poured down upon the and growing in the middle of the deep blue water. Island bloom. The low, quiet voice rock could be heard from all around. Time now stands still, my friend. Rich and rare. We must part keeping heart, my present there. A land that blue. I love this for you. I love this for you. The animals were has a Lovely place to rest. Beautiful and splendid island, a paradise, peace and friendship. The animals admired the home. They noticed that man was gone. They began to miss the turtle very much. So in the spirit of his friendship, they how kind and wise he was, and how he turned his back as a place to rest. And as they talk, realize that Mackinac was not really fun because they saw a large round back to the island and heard his deep familiar Peace and gentle way as the may sunshine drip old and air. May diamonds fall upon the lake and all there. And with an home, my sweet and treasured friends, forever there upon my back. And so to honor their wives. They called the beautiful land Mackinac Island the Turtles Back. Thank you for allowing me to read this, boys and girls, and I will see you later. Good night.